Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ashley Lovell. I am the author of The Wish, Awakened Evil, and my newest book today is Wicked Curse, and they're all three available on Amazon.com and in Kindle as well. I'm also the author of Home. This is a poetry collection about my childhood growing up out in the woods and my stepdad Charlie. Today's video, I'm really excited about it. I have been writing down like a whole bunch of videos to do for my YouTube channel and I'm really, really excited to um, share my life and my story with all of you. So today's video is get to know me questions. So I'm going to have a lot of fun with this one. Okay, so the first question, yes, I wrote it down because I was so excited. Oh my gosh. Okay, so number one, where was I born? I was born in Pella, Iowa. I wish I knew what time I was born. Um, I don't know the doctor. Uh, but yeah, it, I, Pella is like, I think, five or ten minutes from here. I go to Pella a lot with um, a close friend of mine. Where did I grow up? I grew up here in Knoxville, where I live now. Uh, after I was born, my mom packed us all up and we moved uh, to the country. How many pets did I have? Uh, too many to count. My whole life I've had dogs and cats. Um, so when I published a uh, Home, there was actually a picture in here. I found this picture when I was looking through photographs to put in here. And this, okay, right here. Okay, so that's Charlie, my stepdad. And then this dog down here is Jake. Okay, when I saw that photo, I'm like, Mom, who, who is this dog? And she's like, that's Jake. And I was like, I don't remember him. I, I don't remember that dog at all. But, yeah, there's a whole bunch of photos in here of dogs and cats that I grew up with. Like, this is Bear, the top photo. I don't know if you can see it. And then this is Spanky. That was my mom's cat. So, growing up, we had about, like, 15 cats running around. Um, I've had at least probably 10 to 11 dogs through my whole life. Um, so, when we're, when, in 97... When my mom and my dad bought the trailer, we had at least six dogs out there. We had Rowdy, uh, Ben, Bear, Liberty, uh, Pugs, and Tebra. So that's like six dogs. I remember them a lot. And with the cats, oh my gosh. <sighs> we started off with two cats out there at the trailer. Um, Abigail and Ebony, uh, they were given to us by a friend and one cat actually took off and we never saw them, we never saw her again. And Abigail, she was gone for about like five weeks and she came back and she was pregnant. <laughs> That's how the cat started. So... If you have a female cat and she's not fixed and she's gone for about six weeks and then she comes back and she has a big belly on her, yeah, she's pregnant. So we've had mama cats like every three to four months like pregnant. They would leave for six weeks and they would come back pregnant and we would have like three cats in the house all pregnant at the same time. It's a long story. Next question. All right. Number four. Favorite childhood memory. Oh my gosh. I have so many. It, like, 
when I wrote that question, I was sitting there thinking of, I felt like I was going down um, memory road. I was taken back to home. Uh, my favorite one, I would have to say, is uh, either on the weekend or after school, I would get up and I would just go walk around in the woods and the cats would follow me. Sometimes I would either take Liberty with me or I would take Ben. And Ben is like a lover and he's a hugger and he just loves being around people. And the saddest thing about him though is he was abused by teenagers and by men. And he, I remember, like he wasn't scared of Charlie. I think he knew, you know, like he's my dad, he's gonna take care of me. So every time I would go out there, he would wag his tail and he would jump up on me and he would literally like take his front legs and like wrap them around my hip. And that was a lot of, that, that was a good memory. But my most favorite memory would be just walking around in the woods. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. I actually followed a cat mama through the woods because I thought she was going to take me to her little baby kittens, but she didn't. Number five, favorite habit from my childhood. Okay, well, that's obvious. Spending time with the pets. Like I said, after school or on the weekends, I would go out, sit with the cats, play with the little baby kittens. I would sit with Ben and I would talk to him about how mean and cruel, you know, the popular kids were and how mean the kids were on the bus to me. And he, I would just wrap my arms around his neck and I would just cry. And he would lick me in the face as if to say, don't cry, I'm here. So, yeah, that, that's, that was my habit. I would always go outside. I didn't want to be inside. So this was like before I became a, a writer. And I just, I was outside all the time. Okay, number six. Favorite subject from elementary school. Uh, I really loved to read. I would, after I'd get my homework done, I would... <laughs> always ask my teacher, can I go to the library, can I go to the library and check out a book? And they would be like, let me see if you got all your homework done. So they would check it and then they would let me go and check a book out. I used to check out Junie B. Jones and the Magic Treehouse series. I used to read those books all the time. Uh, Junie B. Jones' first book that I read was uh, Junie B. Jones and the Smelly School Bus. I do remember that. I read that a lot. And then the Magic Treehouse series, the first one that I read from that series was the Magic Treehouse series of the Dinosaurs of Time. I think, I don't know what it was called, but I do remember I used to read that one a lot too. All right, this is a really sad one, okay. Saddest memory from my childhood. Okay, I'm going to have to say Barry and the cats because unfortunately, you know, sometimes when mama cats would give birth, some of the kittens wouldn't make it. And everybody in the house wouldn't, they're like, I don't want to go bury it because it would make them like really sad and emotional. So I'm just like, okay, I guess I'll go do it. You know, of course I'm out in the back. Uh, it was like a pond behind our house, but it dried out. And um, I actually called it the cat cemetery because like each time a mom and cat would give birth, at least one or two kittens wouldn't survive. So I'd wrap it in a cloth and I would take it out there and I would bury the cats, I'd be crying. And I was really into it because I would take sticks and I would make a cross and I would lay flowers on the grave. Um, that's how dedicated I was. But they're in heaven now with Charlie. Now this one's pretty scary and it's really sad too. Uh, the scariest memory from my childhood. So I was in fifth grade and there was candy in our classroom and I wanted to have a, a lifesaver. So, uh, I put the candy in my mouth and I started sucking on it. And then I guess I sucked on it too hard and it lunged like in my throat. 
and I started to panic like really bad. I couldn't breathe. And I seriously thought to myself like, oh my God, I'm going to die. And my teacher ran over, took me over to the sink. And I was like trying to like, it wouldn't like come out of my throat. And I was like getting really panicked. And the teacher was like throwing water in my mouth to try to get me if I could like swallow it. And I remember looking down in the sink and I could see my blood coming out of my mouth. And I was like, oh my God, I'm either going to die of a heart attack or I'm going to die from tricking on this lifesaver. And I, I don't remember anything after that. But obviously it came out because I'm alive today. And I went home and I remember my mom was standing by the stove cooking. And my, she said that she remembers the whole side of my face right here was like black and blue. And I don't know why. Maybe I should ask her. But yeah, she said it was like swollen. I guess because from the pressure, when I was trying to like get it out, it just like, yeah. Number nine. I'm, I'm forgetting to say the numbers. Sorry. Number nine. A chore I hated doing in my childhood. Okay, everybody that knows me uh, knows this. <sighs> I hated picking green beans. I hated it. I would do everything in my power to not go out there. I would act like I was sick or I was hurting or if I had something else I wanted to do. Nope. I had to do it. Rachel had to do it and Cody had to do it. So it wasn't just me. So, yeah, I hated that. Okay, number 10. Uh, childhood actor crush. So, the very, the very first movie. So, Kevin Bacon, I thought he was, like, everything to me. He, I thought he was cute. He was handsome. And I remember the very first movie I saw of his was called uh, Tremors. It's about these big worms that, you know, slither through the door. And they have these long things that reach out and grab you and they pull you in and um I remember one day I was in the living room uh watching that movie and I was just like so fascinated with oh okay I was just checking the time 6 30 I'm good because I have to be to church at 7 I was like so fascinated with um Kevin and uh my mom was in the kitchen and I told my mom I said mom I'm gonna marry him one day and my mom's like okay Ashley Obviously, it didn't happen. I mean, I was a kid, you know. So, that was my childhood crush, Kevin Bacon. Favorite music growing up. So, I remember the first time I ever listened to country music, my mom had this uh, this tall thing in her bedroom on the side of her desk. And it had, like, all kinds of different country music and country music CDs. And I would go in there and I would take them. And I would sit on my bed with my CD player and I would just like listen to all the CDs. My cousin got me to listen to pop music. So then I started listening to pop music and I would ask my mom like, Mom, can you buy me this album please? And she would buy it for me. And I remember I bought Britney Spears album. Um, Oops, I did it again. I bought that album... I bought one of um, uh, NSYNC, uh, the Backstreet Boys. The, the Backstreet Boys will always be my main favorite boy band, but right now it's BTS. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Scariest movie watched in my childhood. Okay, so this movie that I watched, I don't remember how old I was, but I remember I was sitting in the living room and I was sitting real close up to the TV. And this movie traumatized me physically and emotionally. I, I watched the movie Jaws. Yeah, that movie was like so terrifying. I think my brother was watching it, I think. No, wait, okay. I went into the living room and... On the TV screen, I seen a boat on the water, and I was like, oh, this movie looks interesting. So, I was sitting there, and uh, my brother, like, turned it up a little bit, and the first scene that I ever saw out of that movie 
is when that shark just came out of the water and landed on the boat. Oh my god. For three months straight, I had nightmares up it like you would not believe. I was like so scared to get up and go to the bathroom. I thank God the bed was right across from the doorway. So if I had to go to the bathroom, I would peek over the edge of the bed and make sure the dorsal, dorsal fin wasn't going by. And I would get on the edge of the bed and then I would like leap into the hallway. Because of, there's like this little tiny hallway right in front of the doorway and then there's the bathroom. Oh, that movie scared the living crap out of me. I did not watch that movie for years, but now I like the movie, so. Favorite subject in school? Of course, writing. I love to write, obviously, so that was an easy question. Least favorite subject in school? Obviously, math. I hated math. I... I I had issues, I had problems with math, I still do today, trying really hard to learn. My dad, Charlie, even tried to teach me how to do math, and I guess I'm just not smart enough. That's all I have to say about that. Okay, um, favorite high school memory. Favorite high school memory. Um, I remember when I first started to write short stories, I would get like so excited. And I would take them to school and I would like show everybody because I was just like, oh my gosh, I wrote a short story. And I would show my friends and my teachers and it was like an awesome moment just to like have a handwritten paper and uh, write the story out and then hand and then show it to people. That was pretty. The big moment in 2005. So, I tell this story a lot because sometimes people ask me, well, what got you to write in short stories and stuff? In the summer of 2005, I was watching the movie uh, National Treasures with Nicolas Cage in it, and he is one of my favorite actors. And I was watching that movie, and then all of a sudden, I, I hear a fire truck in an ambulance and Batman can hear it too I hope everybody's okay um I was sitting in the living room watching National Treasures and I just got this idea about this girl that finds treasure in her basement so I got up and got some paper and I started to write it and then ever since then I've been writing favorite hobby in high school Okay, I actually do remember when I started writing song lyrics. I was in, I think I was a senior because I started, yeah, it was in, it had to have been in 2005 after I wrote my first two short stories. Um, so I started writing a lot of song lyrics because back then I thought I wanted to be a singer and an actress like uh, Hilary Duff and Lindsay Lohan, Selena Gomez and whatnot. And I have over like 300 song lyrics that I've written. And now I had went back to check to see how many. And I actually have over a thousand. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, something that I, something I miss from school. Probably seeing my friends because some of my friends I went to school with I haven't seen in years. And I would love to see them again. I do miss my teachers. There are some teachers that I haven't seen in a while. There are some that I have seen. I've seen some of them at Farmer's Market. And I would be like, oh my gosh. And there are some teachers that I would really love to see that I haven't yeah, seen in a long time. Something I don't miss from high school or either middle school. Uh, I don't miss being bullied and put down uh I didn't have a very good middle grade or high school experience because I was overweight and I had like real bad acne and I just did not like the way I looked and I I hated it and I wanted out of school like so bad when I got out of school it was like a relief so I was yeah I hated it was not fun. Okay, so what's missing from my life right now? Um, I would probably have to say my dad, Charlie, that passed away in 2005. 
Um, I do miss him a lot. And my poetry book that I published uh, in April of this year, there's a lot of poems about him in here in my childhood growing up. And I had a lot of emotions and I've been wanting to write a poetry book, but I've been working on other stuff. I know. I just haven't had the time so finally one day in April I after quarantine uh, I finally was like okay I need to get this poetry book done and get it out there so I wrote like 10 poems that day about my dad and then about being a Christian and growing up in the country so that's what this is about so yes I miss my dad very much and sometimes I wonder and think what would he be doing right now if he was alive today I believe that he would my mom and him would be still living out in the trailer and we would still have all the dogs and I would probably be living down the street in a house myself so yeah so that is it for today's video and I hope you guys really enjoyed it and you can pick one of these questions and you if you want and you can go ahead and leave your comment down below because I would love to hear your guys' comments to any of these questions. And I will actually write these these questions in the description box below. And that is it for today's video. And don't forget, my newest book, Wicked Course, is out now. It is available on Amazon in print for $15. And you can get it on ebook for $8.99. So, yes. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Have a great week. God bless. Bye. Okay, you guys. Uh, it's time to go to church now. It's Wednesday night, and it's 647. So I got to get to moving. And it's dark outside, and I hate walking in the dark. But God's with me, so it'll be fine. So I'll see you guys later. Bye.